It was a regular Tuesday morning. 36 hours earlier, thousands of residents along the Keta coastline had been inundated with flooding from tidal waves. The communities along the coast were all not spared as the sea came biting. After a comprehensive coverage by my colleague, Komla Kluche, the team was dispatched purposely to delve into the lives of victims and look at the daily drudgeries they go through after the waves. After three hours, we were at the disaster zone, the communities along the Keta shores. <laughs> to put issues into perspective, Keta is a coastal town in the Volta region of Ghana. It is the capital of the Keta municipality. Adjoining this famous town are areas like Tugby, Jalukopa, Angloga, Jita, Anyanui, and other small communities. While fishing has been a mainstay for centuries, distraction from tidal waves has become a constant threat to lives and property from the 1950s. And that time, if you are at Blokusu, you see the large house, Cape St. Paul, inside the sea. But that time, the sea was far from the town, about five miles. Before you go to the beach, you pass through the coconut trees. And the one on the 7th of November yet again brought in its wake and told devastation. At Jita, the ravages of the tidal waves were at its worst. Among the tens of homes inundated with water from the waves was the Ahliya family home. We met 69-year-old Bade Ahliya. Having been born in Jita, Auntie Bade, like all inhabitants, was not only in dire straits, but just looked on as she tried to recollect the incident. So this is the current state of the house, which ideally could have been um, a normal settlement, a normal household for auntie. But it's a situation, if you come and see, it's very pathetic. Yeah, yeah. Bade. Now it's a situation that has confronted all residents along all the communities, Aketa, Angloga, but also Sandwich, we have Jita and Anyanui. But it's also because, well, great people who have sacrificed all their lives living in this community, experiencing years of tidal waves like Antik Bade have decided to remain in their own household just for one main reason. They have nowhere else to go. While they have always been alert waiting for the tidal waves, this time around, 
The sense of awareness eluded them, she narrated. Across the areas of Anyanui, Angloga, Salakopa and other communities in Ketu South, water from the tidal ways had reached homes, stopped livelihoods and basic economic activities. Tidal ways have been going on for a lot of time along the coast of the Volta region but elsewhere across the country. But the communities that have been most hit will now be worried about the extent to which the lifeline is for them to stay in those communities. But what about the areas just within the Keta Township and others uh, that may be thinking that they're far away from the shoreline because it could be a matter of the next few years, if not a decade or two, when the tidal waves could soon hit them. But what do they think? Do they think they're far off or they see that threat of the tidal wave coming soon? Let's sample some few views. In the towns of Tugby and Kata, residents had their own share of experiences and their own views on the enormity of the tax ahead. <laughs> This particular one is very serious. And for five days ago, exactly five days ago, the same thing happened, and the people have to move from where they were staying to cross the other road. And as I'm talking to you, none of government officials came to visit the affected people, and it's very alarming. But you see, the sea, as I would always say, it's a god on its own. Nobody can control the sea. You can put up a thousand and one uh, sea defenses. If the sea says it would destroy you, to destroy you. But I think that everything would definitely come from us. Government has to play a role. Yes, we the individuals have to play a role to control all these things from happening. But I think that if government should tell you, don't do this, Roland, you will still do it. Because you feel that, after all, government is not monitoring me. Back in the Jita community, Antigbada, try to look hopeful, having had visits from the National Disaster Management Organization officials, the local assembly and members of parliament. Across Anyanui, Angloga and others, inhabitants narrated harrowing stories and assistance needed. My brother, you can see from my dominion, I'm very, very devastated. Even my house is just by here. My house is just by here. It is wreck in the, house, uh, in the sea. I have no place to sleep over uh, about four or five days now. In fact, uh, urgently, there needs something to be done about it. Otherwise, the whole community will be wiped away. Oh my God. Close by, 48-year-old Mensa Azonliada took us through the next community to see the level of the extent of damage to homes. Yesterday, when you come here, you saw a lot of people parking their things on the road side. They didn't have a place to sleep, no place to cook and eat. So we are just sleeping on the road, roadside. We are suffering. Look how the water comes here. It's, it's a lot of a problem. When you go there, you saw a lot of people. Here is not anything. You enter the, the place where the coconut tree inside there. A lot of people there. They are suffering. They don't have a place to sleep. Presently now, if they want to look at where the town ran down from Anyanui, Puberma, down to the Aprao, it was about five miles, as I'm saying. But it started clearing, the sea started coming, coming, but people are not trying to realize but uh, as far back 1950s, Nkrumah government, 
they started of uh, preventing the sea for taking the kita uh, the for uh, for resistance and a police station zion schools uh, yp bremen schools when the sea started of coming they used the timbers no idea has come of making the prevention. The prevention they did that time was using the timbers of blockade. For many countries, the ocean is a big place for investment. Indeed, you take countries like Mauritius, Seychelles, Brazil, the Netherlands, among many others. Investment along the coast are a big gainer. But right here in our country, the ravaging tidal waves are giving us an indication that if the defences of our coastline are not protected, it could mean investment in the hospitality industry, like the many we're about to show you, will be at risk. Truth be told, while economic life consists basically of fishing in the lagoon or the sea, as well as smallholder farming, the last five years has seen the springing up of investment in hospitality. These investment targeted tourists, catering for local demand and the need of visitors. Clearly affected and seeing disruption in services was the African Home Lodge, known to many visitors as Meet Me There. That is ongoing, but just in the midst of all that we've had this happening, we met Christian, who co-manages the resort. Clearly, the effect on the hospitality industry in the area loom large, likely to take additional investment to get businesses back on track. From that Monday, uh, guests uh, who were around by then, uh, we have to uh, check them out by force. And they've also understood our plight and they have to go. Um, and we have to shut the place down since Monday and then up to today, Wednesday. We are still now in operation. Our decking has been taken by the, uh, by the water as well. We are just hoping for it to dry and then we can uh, reopen business. Never get ready. It is important that we all get to preserve the level of investment along the shores of our country. But for the African Home Lodge, also popularly called the Meet Me There, right here at Jita and Anyanui, well, that investment would also have to be complemented by the efforts of central government in at least having a combination of breakwater and also sea defense to make sure we protect not only this investment, but all the communities around. For investors and tourists too, making considerable investment in protecting the country's shoreline should be the priority of government. Sea wall is expensive, uh, very expensive. Um, and, and to do it in the, across the whole coastline, like, <laughs> who ha who's got the money? So that's a difficult question. I think the one thing that can be done is preparing people, explaining to people why why the sea does come like it does. Um, but then I think there's obviously quite a lot of people who live very close to the sea. Whatever we realize from running this place is pushed into the community project, which is building compost toilets that save sanitation for families and the schools. Then we have the education aspect. So we just behind the, this block, we have the community library over there. Then we have youth, youth sports development program as well. And uh, last month, we just finished a coaching course for 15 local interested coaches. 27.5 kilometers away is the Ellie Boutique and Beach Resorts. Like their counterparts along the stretch, the tidal waves have considerable implications on business. General Manager Julian Batplange narrates how the industry which already was really in under COVID-19, now has been dealt a big blow with the latest tidal waves and its damaging effects. It is because of the scenery one and the opportunity you have with the ocean, it's relaxing. And also you have the opportunity to do so much along the coastline. And that is one of the attractions that draws people to the coastal facilities. For these hospitality industry operators, 
tourism has been greatly affected by the latest disaster. It's a great problem. You, you realize that even though a lot of sea defense has been done here, with the areas that the sea defense hasn't been done, those are the areas that were really hit by these tidal waves. When you look at Western region, along Buzwa, Princess Town, all that area, they were, they are sea defense puts in place. So it reduces the pressure on the land space there. So we, as a country, we would have to look at it to preserve our beaches by providing these sea defense because with global warming and the, the rise of the sea waters, we are going to have these problems. Well, there are well-researched reasons why Ghana's coastline is under threat from tidal waves. We asked a coastal management expert with the University of Cape Coast what have been causative factors for tidal waves and how vulnerable Ghana's coastline is. We can do a lot. We can first give a natural buffer. We relocate the people and also we do the interventions. The third thing I will do, the third intervention I will propose is that the flooding is occurring because, as I said, maybe low elevation topographical area. So if we are able to reduce the impact of the waves that carry the water onto the land, it will help. So I will propose, yes, we do um, what we call the brick water that we fixed a barrier inside the water. We must, first of all, provide uh, some results. We need to have data to do this kind of implementation. Like the groins they are putting or the def sea defense they are doing, I don't know what studies they have considered. How many years will the sea defense take? You know, you don't, it's not about doing what the people want, just go and put raw rocks there to show that you are doing the work. I know studies have been done, but I am proposing that well, before we do the brick water, it is something we have to have data to know how high the brick water will be and how long it can take. Destruction to vegetative cover along the Volta River and the Keta Lagoon is also a considerable concern. We are proposing an integrative approach where we have some hard engineering, some soft engineering. So for example, if um, there are resources and government puts in a brick water in the, along the coastline, but it's, uh, while at that, we can now do some mangrove vegetation or some vegetation planting so that by the time these brick waters are wearing off or are uh, being less effective, we can what our buffer, our our natural vegetation will also take effect. That said, another preoccupation of the people along the Anyanui Toko and Hoover Mer enclave is the cutting of mangroves and other tree forms for firewood along the Kata Lagoon. Perhaps while oblivious to its dangers to the destruction caused the environment and the lagoon, these firewood operators narrated how they work the land to harvest these mangroves and trees to markets. I have a customers, they are within my area, Vuganzo, my Enketa, and sometimes to Keji and to Denu. Even more disturbing are the numerous children of school going age who seem to be involved in the trade, causing some level of destruction to the ecological nature of the lagoon and the tributary of the Volta River. How are you? I'm fine. How old are you? I'm fine. I done a school. Eh. Lafika. Anya. Huh? Basic school. Lafika. Anya. Anya. Eh. Where are my school? Ah. In Kata my you. I'm not Kata. I'm going to go to Makuga. I'm going to go to Nyamali. I'm going to go to Nyamali. Kacho, I'm going to go to Nyamali. Nyamali. Eh. 
Aku dah ni lah sih. Eka, ni ni nak kena siapa? Aduh, wemio, aku lepas. Kau ni, kau cuba bayar, aku dah, aku dah. Oh, last time aku, ni ni nak kau. Aku dah ni lah sih. Aduh, wemio, aku lepas. Kau ni, kau cuba bayar, aku dah, aku dah. Oh, last time aku, ni ni nak kau. Twenty six. Twenty six. Nak kau twenty, angkina kau ni. Aku kau apa pun aku kau ni. Nak untuk aku, aku kau ni aku kau pelajar aku. With all these happening, as the waters from the tidal waves flood the townships, the key roles of the Anglo Traditional Council has become important. To be honest with you, uh, some of us were very young. When we had Kata, was about three kilometers plus into the sea. We grew up, we saw where Zion College was, we saw where the fought was but today we are seeing reality we are seeing reality we are experiencing it so i would say that yes the sea is eating the the remains of the land and if action is not taken now then the whole of the southern sector which we call the southern Volta will be wiped out. And when that thing wipes out, it is Ghana, which is reducing in size. So the government of the day, or whichever government comes on, should really see for the reclamation this thing to come on. Now let's bring you some brief history, a more recent one, because in June 2015, the Keta municipality was hit by tidal waves, destroying some 56 homes and leaving some 627 people in the towns of Jita and Huvama homeless. A year later, in June 2016, the communities of Huvama, Pokpokbo, Vuti, Srongbwe, Jita and Agbladumi were hit by tidal waves, displacing hundreds of people and damaging properties and farmlands. The disaster that recently hit the Keta coastline displays between 2,000 to 4,000 people. Communities such as Abutiankofa, Kajikofa, and Keta Central were largely affected. By all indications, this would definitely not be the last tidal wave incident to hit that part of Ghana's coast. But more important are the policy initiatives that need to be taken to help victims in need to prevent such disasters from transitioning into a humanitarian crisis. Okay.